What's happening, hockey card fans? Welcome back to another episode of Hockey Cards Only. My name is John. I'll be your host. And today we're going to review some Mario Lemieux rookie cards. So, let's dive on in. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, so here we are at the card bench today. How's everybody doing? Um, I wanted to do something kind of similar to last episode. Sorry, I've got cats cats in here and they're jumping around. Um, I want to do something similar to my last episode where I went through some like closed watched eBay listings. So today I wanted to do like a featured card, which is my Mario Lemieux rookie card here. Now the reason we're going to do this one, this is kind of my best card. But the, the issue is here, actually I have two of the exact same grade. So I don't need my best card to be a duplicate. I'd rather have two different cards. So I'm going to keep one of the two. Both cards seem to have their flaw is like minor dimpling. It's, oops, my microphone's in the way. Hold on. It's right there. Let me see if I can do this better. I'll do one at a time. So we graded these last year during the height of the grading season. Now you can see at the top in the middle, minor dimple. Okay. So HGA gave this a seven and a half, which I'd, I'm happy with that. But um, I don't have a seven or an eight in anything else. But it has very sharp corners. Okay. It's not centered perfectly. As you can see, they gave it an eight on centering. And they were saying the corners were pretty much the reason why it's a seven. Um, I would say it's the surface if you were to include those nipples. I'd say that the corners are very sharp. That one maybe not the best. That's probably the worst corner. Um, sorry, I didn't let it zoom in there. Or get real clear on us. Top left. See how there's like some surface, minor surface stuff like right in there on this edge. So anyways, that is one of my two Mario Lemieux. This is the one I think I'm going to let go because I'm going to keep this one that has the nine on the centering. And I'm obviously going to I'd rather have a more centered card than sharper corners. This one had six and a half on the corners. I believe it's this guy right there. Probably more than that, but let's let our focus here. It's having a, high, a hard time being fast. Uh, my my computer has eBay open on the other tab here. There we go. And when I have that going on, the computer bogs down, and it makes my autofocus, which is technically controlled by the computer, it makes it run a little slower. So this is Mario Lemieux number two, the keeper. Nine on centering, good edges, surface. Let's flip her over so you can see the back. So not too shabby. Now, I'm considering, well, there's always the thought of re-slabbing these in maybe an SGA or a PSA case, probably a PSA case. Okay, so I'm going to set these down here. Now, before we move on, as you can see in the top left, I'm going to leave the grand prize giveaway, which is when we reach 1,000 subs we're going to do a big drawing for all the subscribers that we can, uh, they're gonna have to be the public subscribers so I can pull them off the list, yada, yada. So if you're watching, subscribe. And uh, we're in the 300s, you know, steady but surely. I have not been making uh, videos lately and it's because of our YouTube channel's website. It's not working out the way I planned, but I have been fixing stuff and it is gonna work out. So. That is, that is good. So in the meantime, I've been spending more time figuring that out. And I've also been doing a lot of eBay with Pokemans. I, I'm getting experience on eBay selling Pokemon cards. And I have been collecting hockey cards. Okay, this one is not $30. This one I picked up off of eBay the other day, I think for $3. And this is 93 94 Upper Deck. 
Wayne Gretzky with the all-time goal scores gold or silver stamp. Okay. Um, high book value, but they don't really, they usually go for five or so bucks. I do recommend if you're a 90s collector, get, grab one of these. I think this is one per case. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, on 93, 94 upper deck. I have a box I found here. Look. 93, 94 upper deck. It looks like this. This one's open, but I haven't searched it. I was going to do it the other day. I can see the Timu Solani card right here. So that's going to be exciting. There could be that Gretzky in here. I don't, I'm not sure. But it's in this. I think this is like Series 1. Um, pretty good box. Series 2 has Osgood's rookie. It's kind of fun. Um, let me put this back. Okay, I'm off track. So let's go to screen 2. Which is right here, and I'm not exactly where I wanted to be. And then when I switch to this, I'm supposed to move my camera ever so slightly. My darn green screen behind us is not big enough. <laughs> okay. So we're going to have this little thing right here. I don't really care. <clears throat> All right. So I have been wondering how much my 7.5... Mario Lemieux is going to sell for if I were to put it on eBay. Because, I, again, I don't need two. I need one. It has the complete set with it. And I do have it on eBay posted. Um, I think it's 400 or 425 is what I have my 7.5. This card right here, actually. And uh, it's on there if you want to go look. So you can take a... I got pretty good pictures of it. But I wanted to look at recent sales. So starting with, I can do a grade over here in a second. But uh, we're going to just start with all of them. Because ultimately, there's not as many as you think. And my screen width here is not the right width. That is close enough. See that green thing showing up on the right? I need to widen my eBay window. Bingo. Okay, so the first one we have here is a... You can't see it. Hold on. There we go. It's a uh, BGS. Now, I wanted to ask you guys a question while I had you here. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a BGS. That is this case. But we also have a BCCG. Look at this. Little... I'm going to go back to the card bench. Hold on. Okay. Two seconds. Beckett. Oh, look at that lag. We're really lagging right now. Okay, so Beckett, I'm not even going to be able to be on screen correctly. Here's a Peter Mueller Young Guns with this nice Beckett slab. But then I also have this, like, BCCG Beckett card something grading. My cats are going bananas. Um, so these are totally different. And I know the value is going to be totally different on them. Anyways, let's get back to Mario Lemieux. So that was this <clears throat> case right here, as you can see, was the nicer of the two. This one at a six and a half went for somewhere under 311 because when they crossed that out, I believe that's an offer being accepted. Um, and they don't give you the actual sale price. So somewhere under $311. And then the next one went for uh, auction, as you can see, at eight bids. An authentic in SGC. That means it was probably trimmed. I looked at this card up close, and it did not fit in that slab very well. Okay, let's keep on moving. Here's another six in a PSA. Uh, 181. But then we have a nine. 1250. So that is, that's a clean, clean, clean one. Super centered. Stunning card. Buy it now. Bam. There's no cross out on that one. So they might have paid $12.50 for that thing. Here's another PSA 8. Just a small smidgen above ours. Our 7.5. I'm going to kind of assume ours is a 7 if we send it to PSA. So that's what I'm looking at. That's what we're going to look at here is 7s. An eight up to four hundred bucks. If we got really lucky, I don't believe PSA would give my uh, centered one an eight. All right, here we have a 
an eight went for another about 400 bucks. So eights go for the 400 and I believe the sevens are, they're gonna be in the 300s and even the 200s. Like here's a seven SGC went for 200. These authentics are generally trimmed or misprinted or I mean creased cards, if it's only creased, they generally get like a one or a two or a three. If it has good corners and whatnot and it has one crease, they can even go for a four I thought I'd seen. And that's more when I was looking at, like, older 70s cards. Like old Ken Dryden and Gordy Howe and those types of cards. Because I keep an eye out on those, too. Now, the this Lemieux and a 7 SGC, if I were to send mine out to them and pay them the $30, I don't know if, if I list mine, if that means I'd have to get, like, 170 on mine to make it where it might be worth doing. I don't know. Man, my cat's tearing up stuff out in the hallway. I don't know if you can hear this. I got two I got this new kit and it's like five months old. And it's playing with my two uh two year old cat. <coughs> okay. So here is an almost ten. We're passed up a SGC five, I know. It went for under one ninety. So we have this awesome 9.5 that went earlier this month for five grand. Somebody actually did the, uh, there's no line through that one, like this five. Five went for that. Now I would like to uh, maybe pick up some of these in really rough shape, raw cards, and get maybe a $50 Lemieux. There's an autographed one, went for nine. Let's keep going a little faster and I'll stop telling stories. We have an eight and a half here for three and a half SGC. And then here's another SGC, a little over 200 SG7. Another eight and a half went for 466 Canadian. Basically the same as this card up there. I don't know if the price Canadian to American, 350 here, if 466 Canadian is around 350 American. Um dollars the dollars the loonies they still call the uh canadian two dollar thing a toonie i remember when i went to canada that was the i've been to canada about 10 times but when i was younger that was the fun thing the toonie coin all right let's keep moving we have this hga seven and a half here it is basically the card i have right in front of you today they have the other um, label on it. At the end of the day, the labels at HGA can get tricky. Okay. These were like brand new kind of uh, designs they did. I was impressed with my Lemieux in the black. Okay. Which is what I have both of these in. My Steve Iserman came back. Let me go back to the card table for one second. Everybody, this matters here. So I have the splash design, which is cool. It looks fine. It's probably one of their better. And I know it might not be as timeless. Okay. It might not be as timeless as an SGC uh, PSA or SGC case. Um, but they have some cases that did mess um, up the, the, the whole look of the card, to be honest. Let me go back to scene two here. And I wouldn't say this Lemieux is one of those candidates with this yellow 7.5 and whatnot, but I just wish you could preview that before you committed. If I were to do it again, I would have done them at HGA and just done their black. Something that just a little bit more bland. Um, at the time, I didn't really think of it. I was This is the first cards I ever submitted. To even see what they pulled, okay? And it was only 20 bucks. So cracking the case... We now know it's a seven and a half, roughly. So it's worth like sending out and maybe, you know, I know it's not a five. That's what I didn't know if it was going to be a five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 20 bucks we found out. Year later, SGC and PSA's prices dropped. Maybe crack the slabs. Not sure. Okay. Let's keep moving. We're going to be in the 180 range, looks like, with SGC. Here's a Beckett six. That's. 193 Canadian, I believe. 
Here is a PSA 5 going for a 240. So that is substantially more. Okay. Here is a HGA 5.5 running a 133. I would love to sell one of mine. Keep 100 bucks and buy this one. That'd be kind of cool. Maybe re-slab a five and a half, you know. Um, I didn't even look up close on these cards, so I don't know on that one particular. But we have a PSA 7 going for 240 We're talking a good $40 more, maybe even 60 than the SGCs on, on this. So I don't know if the grading cost uh, is today. It all depends on how many cards you send in, really. So if you could get it done for $40 instead of... SGC's $20, $20, $18 even, I believe. It still would reflect at the end of the day. Here is a Beckett 7, 300 Canadian. Okay. We have a Lemieux uh, Beckett. What is this one? Beckett Autographed Authentic. So that one's going to be a little different compared to normal. Under $1,200. <clears throat> PSA 6. 230. So, what are we learning right now? Now, we're back to June, so this is six to seven weeks ago. C economy is a little bit better. The card sales should get higher as we go back in a way, because I believe they're slowly dropping. But I don't think that's going to keep going. I think we're in a stage right now where uh, here's a PSA 6, 220. Um, I don't know if it's. There's this uh, PSA 9 for a grand. Not too bad. Here is that, we just scrolled through it, this uh, Beckett BCCG10. They seem to give a lot of those out. Let me show you. The only 10 I own is from, from that company, and it's this funny Connor McDavid rookie card. <laughs> um... Those have come down in price since I bought that, maybe 20%. So keep an eye out for those. If you want a good deal on a Connor McDavid rookie in a 10, this is a very prevalent, sorry, I don't want to switch the screen, but very prevalent 10 grader. So, I mean, I don't see a lot of uh, actual Beckett 10s, you know, this Peter Mueller, just like what we saw up there. So let's keep scrolling through. We have a PSA 5 running only 100 bucks. That's a good deal. Here's a Beckett 7, 300 Canadian. Up next, we have a PSA 9, $1,200. $1,300, my bad. $1,299. Here's another of those BCCG 9s. See that? Hmm. See the difference in a BCCG and a Beckett. This 9 went for less than the 7. Okay. Anyways, let's keep learning. PSA 6, offer accepted under 450. That card is worse than mine. Worse than mine by one and a half clicks. And mine comes with a whole complete set and the sticker inserts. And I cannot even get 400 for it on eBay right now. So, but that did not go for 450. That was an offer. Hey, buddy. My cat's watching me, meowing at me. So we'll keep going here. We're now into June 7th. We have a, what is this one? An SGC8. Offer accepted under 550. Mint 9 PSA offer under 1600. PSA 5, right at 13. 113. We have another Beckett seven and a half. There's our our grade right there, but a different grader. Over 300 bucks Canadian. So the difference in grader for my card. Let's go back to the table. HGA. It's like a hundred dollars difference than if it was a PSA for the, for this card. If you're in the sixes, sevens, and eights. If you're lucky enough to be in the nines, yeah, definitely uh, PSA that one, I would assume. I don't know PSA's pricing, and it changes. So, 
maybe if there I, there's not a lot of stuff I own that is in this situation a PSA seven and a half would yield well over a hundred dollars more so we should crack it and send it knowing it's at least in halfway decent shape so let's go back to the eBay listings let's keep going down here July 4th not July my bad June 4th we had a PSA eight and a half clearing under 500 bucks so that's a pretty good deal SGC7 runs 200 SGC8 runs 300 there you go sevens or two eights or three so anyway here we go into the GMA GMA is an extremely low budget grader that I've thought about sending lots of $10 vintage cards to just to see how they go um, 190 for a seven so that's about equivalent to my HGA I would assume as far as uh, grading value here here's a SGC four and a half went for less than 200 offer accepted here is a PSA 7 this is one of our lowest price ones maybe there's a scratch in the case or something but it went for 162 it's got like a price tag on there but we're now getting back into spring May 30th offer accepted on a Beckett seven and a half under 300 bucks Okay, so that one for less than 300. Here we have a PSA Mint 9, 1200 bucks. Here's another HGA to look at, a 7, very off-center. Okay, you can tell that from this thumbnail picture how off-center that is. What for a 7? So we shall see. I bet that thing has good corners, and it's in very good shape for it to be a 7 with that centering. And nine, uh, SGC nine, went for a little under $1,100 there. So as you can see, it did a little of that. Let's go up here and, uh, let's click straight up sevens. These are going to all be sevens. It looks like there's 14 of them. If it'll let me do it, it's kind of laggy. Okay, here we go. All of our sevens. Going back to July 6th and prior, okay, we are in the 200s, give or take. But when we hit that PSA 7, we are in the, you can see, 240s. And then when we get to this Beckett, we're probably, he had a best offer in the 3, that's in the 2, is that in the 240s as well? So Beckett PSA, roughly tied here. Here's another 7. That might be the exact same listing. Here is the SGC, went for 200, which is only $10 off the GMA. So, and only how many off here? HGA actually just scored less than GMA, 190. But this thing was very off center. So I'm gonna just assume that this card when you looked at it, you were just like, yeah, that might not be the one I want. It's that far off center. It might be real, real clean to get a seven, but. And here we go. We go back into May. PSA sevens are in the 300s. And the, whew, someone got a deal there. One bid. $99 for a HGA seven. You could re-slab that. That would be the, that would be the uh, label I would have chosen if I were to do this again. The solid black. Let me get that back up there so you can see it better. I'm lagging today on the uh, two screens here. So, well, okay. Well, there they are. Here's the 250 PSA 7. So, I would like to get in the 250 range for my card. If I have to pay $18 to SGC, I don't think I'll get any. Well, there's that right there. I don't think I'll get much added value. Plus, they'll have my card for a couple months. The only way to do that is the PSAs right now for Mario Lemieux. Now, this is not the Opeachy card. Everything could change. That card's worth twice as much, roughly. So, yeah. So, uh, 
Let's go back to the card bench here. Bam, I will close that. So that that's today's episode on reviewing some <clears throat> graded cards. So if you're interested, let me know. I would love to sell one of these outside of eBay. I'll probably put a nice clean picture of it up on my Instagram account for hockey cards only. So hope you enjoyed the episode. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to be doing more card review, um, mainly rookie cards, 80s, 70s rookie cards, maybe a few 90s. The newer stuff, um, there's a hundred other channels that do the brand new stuff. I don't collect that stuff. <laughs> Like here, here's one of my newest hockey cards I bought off of eBay. <clears throat> it's a roster card for the the Canucks, right? Well, I, I wanted it so I could be real familiar with the roster. I haven't watched hockey. I watched hockey last season for the first time in like seven or eight seasons. So as far as new stuff, I am a newbie. Okay. Now, what I didn't like about this is it did not have one of my new favorite uh, Canucks on it, which is Connor Garland. Big Connor Garland fan right now. So he was not on here. He just got traded in that year. I don't think he is gone off of the Canucks roster. I thought he was on the second second line. I'm not sure. I saw um, that hockey guy I'm do an episode on it like a, three weeks ago. Followed that. So anyways, take it easy, everybody. I'll talk to you soon. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.